Hello guys, in this video I want to talk uh, about the risky topology definition and I'm going to show you one example that I have mentioned in my previous video but here I'm going to give you more details about that example. So first I want to define the risky topology and in some sense I also want to like prove it. So the way I'm defining I want to give you like the proof that the things that I'm going to define is going to be actually the risky topology. And second goal is uh, example. So let's remind ourselves what we have defined uh, in previous videos. In previous videos, we define our set N, which we'll call like an affine space as a collection of points AI, A1, and AN, where my AI it, it belongs to some field K, where K is a field. Then what we can do, we can consider, since we have like this field over here, we can consider like the space of all polynomial functions in n variables. So let's just consider kx1 and xn. And then what we can do, uh, we can take, like, let's take just any element from there. So let's take some function f. So, and as an example, uh, let's take f of x1, xn is equal to x1. And then what we can do, we can ask like, uh, or we can define like the object, which is going to call, uh, let's, let's uh, make a definition. Uh, I will call the object Z of F is the vanishing set of a polynomial function. So in other words, it's all points A, which belongs to my affine space, such that if I'm going to take this point A and plug it in inside my function, then I'm going to get zero. So let's do example in the case when uh, n is equal to three. So what uh, are we going to have in this case? We're going to have a polynomial in three variables. Let's call them x, y, and z. And we're going to take function f uh, of x, y, and z, which is equal to x. And then I'm going to ask, what is my z of f in this case? But if I'm going just to sketch a 3D plane with coordinates x, y, and z, then we can see that z of f is going to be consist of points a, let's call it with coordinates a1, a2, and a3, such that, that a f, f of a1, a2, a3 is going to be equal to zero. But instead of x, I'm going to plug in my a1, so my a1 is equal to zero. So z of f is going to consist of all points a inside my a3 such that a1 is equal to zero. But this is exactly is going to be, a, you can check, is going to be x, uh, sorry, yz plane. So in this case, this is going to be my z of f. Okay, so the vanishing set is basically just choose the points from your fine set and ask uh, for which points, uh, the following polynomial is zero. So next one, uh, let's actually uh, observe the following thing. So let's remark. So the first remark, if f of a is equal to zero, then it doesn't matter if you're going to take uh, any other polynomial, uh, let's call it polynomial g, multiplied by f and relate at the same point a, this, the whole thing is still is going to be zero because it's just equals to g of a times f of a. And since f of a is zero, then the whole thing is zero. And the second remark, if you have that two functions are vanishing in a, then there is some or difference also vanishing in a. So using these two remarks, we can kind of show, prove the following statement, that polynomial so the vanishing set of a polynomial or of the function f is going to be actually equal to the vanishing set of the ideal which is generated by my function f. And just a reminder, we say that uh, if you will take some subset i of your polynomial ring, then you say that i is an, ide is an ideal. If um, i is like you can think about it as an abelian group of a polynomial ring corresponding to addition and if you will take any element of your ring 
and multiplied by any element of your ideal, they're going to lie inside your ideal. So in other words, you have f of g belongs to i for any f in k, x1, xn, and any g inside i. So probably let me just um, argue or show you the short proof of the left inclusion and the right inclusion. So for the left inclusion, you want to show that if you will take any element, let's say, I don't know, like A, which belongs to Z of F, then from here will follow that element A is going to be belong Z of, um, is going to belong to uh, the vanishing sort of the ideal of F. And why it follows? Because uh, to show this, you want to show that um, H of A is going to be equal to zero for any h which belongs to ideal of f. But if h belongs to ideal of f, then it means uh, h is going to be equal to, I don't know, let's call it like g times some f, because this ideal is generated by f. And then from our first uh, property over here, we will get that uh, h of a in this case is equal to zero. For our second conclusion, I will take my element uh, A, which belongs to the vanishing set of an ideal. So in this case, uh, it will follow that uh, H of A is equal to zero for any H inside my ideal. But since H sits inside of my ideal, which is generated by F, I can take my H to be equal to F. So that's why uh, you will have that F of uh, A is equal to zero when h uh, is equal to f. So as a generalization of this, what we can do, we can just consider right now like any, let's take uh, some polynomials f1 and fn in our polynomial ring. And then we're going to create a set s which will consist of these polynomials. So in the same way, we will can then consider the vanishing set of s. And what is the vanishing set of S is going to be all points which belongs to AN, to our fine space, such that it's going to be a zero for every polynomial from one to N. So let's do example. Let's take N is equal to three. So we're going to have three dimensional fine space and our polynomial ring X, Y, and Z. Let's consider uh, the first polynomial f1, which is equal to x, and f2, which is equal to y. And let's try to figure out what is my, uh, what is the vanishing set uh, of these two polynomials. So again, by definition, the vanishing set means I'm going to take my point A, which uh, has coordinates a1, a2, a3. And then my point is going to belong to the vanishing set if um, f1 of a is equal to 0 and f2 of a is equal to 0. But what is f1 of a? Instead of x, I'm going to plug in a1. And what is f2 of a? Instead of uh, y, I'm going to plug in a2. So then our conclusion that the point is going to be belong to our vanishing set if its first two coordinates are going to be equal to 0. So I will have 0, 0, and a3. And if we're going to sketch um, three-dimensional fine space and take a look at our previous example, which I did over here, where f1, in this case, the vanishing set was yz plane, and you can guess that f2, the vanishing plane, is going to be xz plane. So this is going to be equal to my as a vanishing set of z of f1 then uh, you can check that xz plane is going to be uh, the vanishing set of z f2 and these points where a3 can vary between negative infinity and positive infinity exactly corresponds to the z axis so this is going to be the vanishing set of z f1 f2 and actually, from this geometric picture, you can, uh, so, so first, like, what is your uh, z of f1 and f2? 
is going to be the set of points 0, 0, A, 3, uh, where A3 belongs to your field. And let's say like, I don't know, like complex numbers, for example. But from this picture, you can see that how to get the Z axis from uh, this plane and from this plane. You just need to intersect them. So in my next video, I'm going to show to prove this property in general that Z of F1 and F2 is going to be that Z of uh, F1 intersection Z of F2. Yeah, and here I probably need to be a little bit more careful. I'm going to add these brackets because this is basically the meaning of Z of S. It's just vanishing set, uh, the vanishing set of some uh, polynomials. So finally, uh, we can show the same result that uh, Z, uh, the vanishing set of the finite set of some polynomials, or that can be also be infinite, we didn't put like any restriction, is going to be the vanishing set of the ideal which is, is going to be generated uh, by those polynomials. And you can show uh, this equality by using the same ideas that we uh, show uh, this equality in this case. And basically the idea, if any point is the root of one of this, of all of these polynomials, then it's going to be the root of their linear sum and uh, their like products times some other functions. And uh, opposite direction, if I want to show that right-hand side belongs to the left-hand side, if uh, your point uh, belongs uh, to a vanishing set of some ideal, then it's going to be a vanishing point for each individual polynomial, so for each individual generator. And since your ideal is generated by S, then uh, that point is going to be a vanishing point of each of your generator. So that's why uh, all points, uh, that point is going to be belong to the left-hand side. And finally, uh, let me give you a definition of the, the risky topology. So what we're going to show you actually in the next video, in this video, probably we just more and more explained the basic uh, like concept, the basic objects. So we're going to define the risky topology the following. If we're going to take the affine and dimensional space, then we know that in order to define the topology, we need either to tell what are your going to be open sets and what are your going to be closed sets? And we saying that if I will take the set of vanishing uh, like points of any ideal i, where i is um, an ideal of my polynomial x1, xn, then elements of this set are going to be the closed set of my topology. So the risky topology on AN. And actually what we're going to do to show that, we're going to show um, the following three things, which I'm going to do in my next video, that we want to show uh, empty set and the whole AN is going to be belong um, I don't know, let's call this uh, set like tau is going to belong to tau that uh, finite union so if I will consider the i1 union uh, zik then it's also going to belong to my topology and the third one that uh, like any like intersection also like I don't know um, the intersection of Z I J where J uh, we don't require it to be um, uh, finite also belongs to my topology where each Z I J belongs to tau. So if we're going to show these three properties, then we're actually going to show that the collection of these sets are going to define a topology, which is called the risky topology on the end. So this is going to be next video. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions and if you have any recommendations, what should I do next? 
uh, in terms of uh, like other like series, I was planning to uh, show you that uh, S1, uh, like a circle as of words, is a smooth manifold just by using definition with straightforward computation. So pl please let me know if you're interested in this. And uh, anyway, so have a nice day and uh, I will see you soon. Bye.